towers are widely regarded as some of the best objectives in the game. They open up the map, give gold, and can help snowball a lane. So what if we told you that taking them was actually losing you games as well? Now we know what you're thinking. This is an absolutely ridiculous claim. But by the end of this video, you'll see that you probably need to put a little bit more thought into when you take towers instead of just defaulting to it if you can. We're not saying to never take them, but there's definitely a lot more than one case where you don't want to. Before we get into the video, let's ask our question of the day. What do you think is a misunderstood part of League of Legends? Tempo is the obvious answer for me. It's often that players have different definitions or are completely misunderstand altogether. Let us know in the comments below how you would define it and also your answer to our question. With that, let's get right into the guide. In our first example, Udyr takes the Rift Herald at around 11 minutes in, and from here he's obviously looking for a place to use it. He goes top a few minutes later and secures the first turret. But what was wrong with this play? The most obvious thing is that the top tower was extremely low when Harold was used. Shelly does anywhere from 2000 to 2750 true damage to towers depending on her level. So by using Harold when the top tower was lower than 1000 health, more than 1000 damage is just wasted. Rift Harold should ideally be used on a tower that's just about half health, as towers have unique properties that make them tankier when they get lower, and Harold's true damage is unaffected by these resistances. However, there are some exceptions to this. It may be tempting to rush to get first tower, but you really need to consider the overall state of the game first. If we look at the minimap, we can tell that none of the blue team's towers are close to being taken down, with both top and mid towers being at 5 plates remaining, and bot tower at just 3. Additionally, every lane for the blue team is ahead or relatively even, and jungle is also winning quite hard. There is very little danger for blue team not getting first hurt in this game. In fact, Kennen would likely get first tower on his own without the help of a herald, and we would much prefer to use it mid for not only more gold from getting plates that are about to disappear, but also for damage on a more important structure. Mid lane tower is by far the most important one in the game, as it being destroyed opens up both sides of the map, while side lane towers only open up one. In terms of sheer value of vision, this makes mid lane tower twice as valuable as the other outers, and a much higher priority in general for damage to be dealt as your snowballing potential will be much higher. If the overall map state was more volatile, and there was a question over if first tower would be taken by the enemy team, using herald top would be much more okay, as getting first tower gold is definitely nothing to scoff at. However, it presents us with a few other problems, namely that it allows the enemy team to catch back up. Once outer towers go down, you put yourself on a timer, similarly to how taking an inhib too early can become a bad thing. You need to actually use the pressure that it creates to do something, or it soon becomes a negative. For example, in this position, side laners can actually freeze these waves for a very long period of time. TF could easily walk into the wave here, tank the minions, then drop aggro to basically stop the enemy team from farming this wave indefinitely while gaining gold for himself. This is obviously a huge issue, and in lower elos it's one that goes unpunished. The vast majority of the time, laners will walk up and just kill the wave like TF does here. This is why most players don't recognize that this is a mistake, because the enemy team will almost never capitalize on it. But in higher elos, this will become a source of gold and experience that the enemy team has to intentionally fix. If you find yourself in TF's position, as a laner or a jungler, freeze these kinds of waves. Don't just immediately push them out. You'll end up denying yourself every wave until the enemy inevitably comes to push again, instead of freezing and allows you to farm again. It requires someone to actually come all the way over to break the freeze, and if you see where Yasuo actually needs to be to do this, another glaring issue arises. How does someone actually overextend to this point while avoiding death? It's really hard, and even harder if the mid lane tower is still up, as controlling the enemy jungle becomes extremely difficult due to the enemy being able to rotate from here relatively safely. Yasuo would really need his team to be putting pressure mid by shoving the wave, and have his teammates rotate over to support him and give vision so he can break the freeze. In solo queue, however, we all know that this will just never happen. So if you make the decision to break these outer tier 1s, you need to make sure that the tier 1 mid tower is quick to follow, or your side laners will start losing CS very quickly or die trying. Even with mid tower broken in this game, laners do a very poor job with knowing when to overextend and when not to, so they'll often be punished just like Yasuo is here. This is a large reason why laners and lower elos will often have decent CS throughout laning phase, but afterwards, you'll see sidewaves never be touched sometimes for 10 plus minutes, and that's not even an exaggeration. 
So now that we understand a few of the problems that arise after taking the tower, let's rewind a bit to when Udyr actually decides to rift top and talk about a few more. At this point, Udyr is already quite ahead of the curve, while Kennen is pretty much even. Udyr has already hit his major spikes with gold and experience, while Kennen has not. In a spot like this, sharing gold is often not the best idea. For example, putting 300 or so gold on both Udyr and Kennen can be fine if it helps Udyr reach a specific item before a dragon fight or some other important timing, but in general, having gold isolated onto one player early game is much more impactful, since full item completions are where the big spikes happen. Getting 600 plus gold onto Kennen can mean that he has his Zonias, or death cap, way before the enemy expects, and can completely turn the tide of a fight. Think about who scales better with gold, or who can use it immediately to snowball, and put your gold on that player. Supports often make this mistake by taking tower plating with their ADC, when it's often more ideal to let them get the solo gold and reset instead. Another example that will come up quite often is when junglers rift bot tower at relatively high health and stay afterwards to hit plates. Towers have another unique property that makes them tankier the more players that are around. This gives large diminishing returns when more than two players are hitting a tower at once. Not only because it takes much longer to kill the plates, but also because you'll be sharing plates among three or more people, which, as we just explained, can really reduce the overall value of the influx of gold. It can often be much better for the jungler and support to use their priority that they gain to instead take time to invade on a camp, securing 100 plus gold as well as experience and distributing the gold much more efficiently. Let's look at another example to talk about more reasons why leaving a tower up can be beneficial. Riven absolutely demolishes her top lane matchup versus Akali, scoring several solo kills and going up quite a bit in gold and experience. Riven realizes how far ahead she is and opts to freeze the wave. When the freeze breaks, she slow pushes, building a huge wave and dives the Akali easily. Akali quite literally didn't farm for over 3 minutes, and Riven can basically on repeat do this exact same tactic over and over again until the tower goes down. This denies Akali huge amounts of experience as well as gold and helps Riven to extend her lead by a monumental amount. Unfortunately, Riven completely spoils her lead by greeting for first tower in a game where none of her towers are threatened at all. Not only dying in the process, giving up her 3 level advantage and shrinking it to just 1 level, but also allowing Akali to break this cycle by crashing a wave all the way to Riven's tower, getting plates herself, and equalizing the lead by quite a bit. Lots of junglers here would rift top and ruin this as well, so this advice applies to a lot of roles. Just don't take this tower at all. There's quite literally zero reason to, as Rift is already down, so opening up top side of the map is relatively useless, and instead, allowing Riven to even proxy farm between the top two towers while Vi invades would result in Akali getting literally zero XP and gold for the next segment of the game until minions kill the tower. Riven now has to overextend quite a bit onto the enemy side of the map in order to get her waves to crash. She gets ganked by three people and fortunately managed to outplay at least part of it. But not being results based and claiming that this makes this a good play here is quite important. I think it's quite easy to see how this quickly could have gone very badly, and Akali could have potentially gotten this kill and then frozen this wave for a few minutes. These are just a few examples of why taking towers in early game can cost you massive advantages. League is a game where there are infinite possibilities, so it would be impossible to actually lay out every single scenario that you shouldn't take a tower. We just hope that this video has made you think a bit harder about why you want to take them, and made you consider at least a few of the consequences. If you want more guides just like this, make sure to check out our website, skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcaps want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.